Hello, welcome to Burlington City Arts Family Art Saturday. My name is Jessie and I'm really glad you're able to join me for some joyful art making and exploration. This Family Art Saturday connects to Burlington City Arts Center's exhibition, Pivotal Moments, Select Works by Diane Gabriel. We're going to draw inspiration for our art making and exploration from Diane Gabriel's geometric design drawings and her playful approach to art making. Together, we are going to explore colors, shapes, patterns, and materials within a grid structure. It is going to be a beautiful day of creative art making. Let's begin by looking at some of Diane Gabriel's artwork for some inspiration. Look closely at Diane Gabriel's artwork, untitled number 12, Square Designs. What shapes do you see? Can you find any patterns? Look for lines or shapes that repeat. How do you think Diane Gabriel created this artwork? Untitled number 12 square designs is comprised of 48 gridded squares. This artwork is part of a larger series of geometric drawings of squares and circles. The artist created with support from an artist's grant from the Vermont Arts Council. In this work, Diane Gabriel used a lot of different mark making techniques, including rubbing, smudging, erasing, and puncturing the paper. Diane Gabriel's drawing is about possibilities and exploring the boundaries of art making and materials. Throughout her life, Diane Gabriel created many artworks that continued to investigate patterns, cycles, and transformation through creative experimentation. Today, let's try our own creative exploration. Together, we can use the grid structure to create awesome artwork that explores colors, shapes, patterns, and unique materials. The possibilities of this art activity are bountiful and beautiful. The materials that we're going to use today are really open-ended. You may choose to have some basic art supplies such as paper, pencil and glue, but you also may find a lot of the materials by gathering objects from around your home and materials outdoors in the natural landscape. Let's talk about grids. What is a grid? A grid is the use of lines that cross each other to create a framework. So if I drew a straight line going from one side of my paper to the other, and then I crossed it with another line, I have created a grid of four squares. And all it is is a line crossing another line to create a series of squares. I could create a grid with more squares by adding more lines. Now I have eight squares. Look at how Diane Gabriel used a grid in her artwork. Drawing is just one way to create a grid. Grids are everywhere. There's even a grid behind me in my window frame. Let's start today by going outside and seeing if we can build a grid for some artwork using natural materials. I'm excited to be out in nature to build my first grid artwork. Diane Gabriel used nature for inspiration for her own art making and often foraged materials from the natural landscape for her work. So I have foraged some sticks, gathered some sticks so that I can create my first grid. So instead of drawing a line, I'm gonna use the stick as a line and I'm gonna place it here. I found a good place in my garden where I can build a piece of artwork. And then I'm just going to take another stick, use it as a line and intersect it to begin my grid. And I could frame it in with more sticks. 
husband. As I'm building, I can move the sticks around as I need to. Awesome, I have my first grid built and I just use sticks for it. I've got one, two, three, four sections. So inside these sections, just like when we looked at Diane Gabriel's geometric drawing, we're going to fill each section with a different pattern. And I'm gonna find things to make these patterns outside in my garden. So I'm gonna look for interesting leaves or flowers, sticks and rocks that I can put inside each of these squares to create a unique piece of artwork. So I looked around my garden and I found some beautiful petals and flowers and greenery. And I'm gonna begin putting them inside my grid. And as I do that, I'll be thinking about patterns. So I'm going to use these pretty little pink petals. I think that'll be a wonderful pop of color. And I'm going to begin arranging them in there, creating a pattern from my own imagination. And remember, the materials that you find outside are probably going to be different than the ones that I have found. And you might decide to arrange them differently too. You could even make your grid bigger or smaller. There are so many ways to approach this. All right, so I have a couple lines of petals going on. And they're looking really pretty. It's, this first piece was really fun to build. I liked experimenting with the ways that I arranged things. As I experimented, I learned that I really liked the way these little daisy-shaped flowers looked when they were turned upside down. I thought that it made a really nice color pop with those pink petals. And at first I just had some violas lined up, but with those little blades of grass in there, that made it a really strong pattern. So really fun. Each of these little squares gave me an opportunity to experiment and play inside this grid. I think it's a pretty good first piece of grid art using natural materials. Let's see what else we can build. I can build teeny tiny grid art with just a few simple materials too. I've collected these little stems, these little green stems, and in my garden I am going to build a little grid drawing on this rock here. And I'm just going to line up my stems creating an X or a T and then framing it in to create a grid. Remember, I can make as many squares as I want just by adding more stems. I'm just gonna keep this one simple. I've got four squares, one, two, three, four. And then I can play, I could just put a simple leaf in two of them. And then just by arranging teeny tiny leaves, I can create the most beautiful miniature nature art. And I'm just making a pattern by putting my leaves in the same direction or choosing some of the same materials. Oh, I like how this one just used three different materials and it was just simple patterns that I added to create this little nature artwork. You might just want to wander around your garden or your neighborhood and see where you can build little nature grid drawings. You may have some grids that are already made in your natural landscape. I found this grid made with some patio blocks in my yard, but it reminds me of a grid that I might also see on a sidewalk. I was so excited to find this grid that was already outside. I didn't even have to draw it. I just filled it with different patterns and colors and textures to create a little gem of a artwork here. You might also be able to find a grid inside your home, much like those patio pavers I found. Perhaps you have a tile floor or a quilt or a checkerboard, and you could create 
some artwork, finding some objects around your home. For this piece, I worked on top of a quilt that I had at home, and I thought a lot about Diane Gabriel's geometric shape drawing. So I played with some pattern blocks that I had and experimented with the ways that I repeated them and the colors that I used. That was pretty fun. There's a lot of different ways I could have arranged these, and it's exciting to think about how I could use just those simple materials to make so many different artworks. I thought my kitchen floor might make a really great background for this project because it's a grid and the grid goes on and on and on. I could have made this a much larger piece of artwork, but I just kept it kind of small and used markers because I liked the color and I had plenty of them to play with. And it's not a permanent piece of artwork. I'll clean it up after it's done, but I just liked exploring and experimenting and seeing the way the different colors played with each other, thinking creatively. If you wanted to make a permanent grid artwork with some found materials. You could use some of your art supplies and crafting supplies and create a grid on a piece of paper and then glue them down in different patterns. I found some popsicle sticks that I have in my craft collection. And I could just start gluing them down each in a square, creating a grid. And this would be a piece of artwork that I could save for a long time. The other pieces, the ones on the carpet and the tile and outside, those are just temporary art pieces to be enjoyed in the moment and, and maybe a few moments after that. Each window, each square in the grids offers up these new possibilities, these new moments for creating something special. It can be the small little experiments that you're making while building your artwork that can really transform this piece and it's so fun. What happens when you introduce a new color to your grid or if you switch the background color for your pattern? can be really exciting. You can add some more drawing onto yours to create additional patterns. I have had such a wonderful time experimenting and creating artwork using a grid structure. My imagination is full of ideas to try out. I wonder what sort of found objects or natural materials will you choose when you're building your grid artwork? Remember to play and experiment and to explore. This art is all about possibilities. We have another Family Art Saturday coming up in June. Join us for our next Family Art Saturday at the BCA Center on June 26th. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful Family Art Saturday and happy creating. Bye!